So first of all, again, my name is Tai Zhan. I'm the president of the Bell Road Chamber, uh, Global Chamber Alliance. So basically, I'm um, coming from Shanghai. We're here to discuss One Bell's One Road Initiative. Hello, everyone. My name is Jun Chang. I'm with China Data USA. China Data USA is a, a US edition. We are headquartered in New York in the United States, and we have nine different branches. I'm based in San Francisco. Thank you. Hi, I'm Denise O'Brien. I was born and raised here in Silicon Valley, and I moved down to Los Angeles to pursue my, my dreams in journalism and television broadcasting. And in the last 35 years, living in Southern California, have developed a number of companies, uh, one of which is uh, focused on entertainment and branding, marketing, public relations. And I work with Chinese investors as well as bring together uh, with the initiative that we'll be discussing a lot of Chinese and American CEOs to work together uh, to make successful businesses in their own communities in both countries. Erica. Uh, my name is Xiao Hua Yang. I am a professor of international business at the University of San Francisco School of Business. And uh, I'm also director of China Business Studies Initiative, a research center at the university which bridges US-China businesses. And it is a knowledge center. We create knowledge and share knowledge with our students and faculty and the business community. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Helen Lee, the Deputy Director of China SF. China SF is a non-profit quasi-government organization. We have been 10 years under the city of San Francisco. In the past 10 years, we have recruited over uh, 96 Chinese companies to land in San Francisco created over 700 jobs, and the economy impact is 5.1 billion US dollars. And we have served over 1,000 Chinese companies, helping them to give the consultation to help them decide if they are qualified or if they get benefit to land in the US market. Thank you. I'm Nick Kaspar. I'm the interim director of the Santa Clara Chamber of Commerce um, right here in Silicon Valley. Um, as a chamber, we really focus on three things, and that's promoting economic development within this uh, city and region, representing the businesses and their voice, and then building a vibrant community um, here in Silicon Valley. So excited to be here. And uh, as you can see, uh, we have a distinguished panel of experts, each individual, and they're representing a different, unique organization talking about particular One Bell, One Road initiative. So I, before we started, I want to take a moment to express my deep appreciation for taking the time out of your business schedule. And obviously, we're here uh, to talk about very important issue. And just a kindly note, when you talk, and uh, make sure the, your microphone next to your mouth so people can hear. So now, um, you know, One Bell's One Road, short name, Bell and Road Initiative, it is a mega project for global infrastructure and a business collaboration. A lot of people have a misconception about the Bell Road Initiative. Is there something to do with me? Or is there something to do with United States? So we're trying to start a conversation, talk about what is Bell Road Initiative. So let's start with this way, start with Nick. What's your personal perspective about the Belt Road Initiative? I think the, the Belt and Road Initiative really shows that um, China has, has really doubled down on the idea that building transportation infrastructure um, really plays a big, has a big impact on the economy. And that's something that in California and the United States that we're really seeing now is that um, you need to have the transportation infrastructure in in place and uh, to, to for your economy to grow so i think that really serves an example for us to show the importance of how having transportation infrastructure and, and having great ways of transportation really can play a big impact on the economy okay. the one bell one road initiative is leading by china so that makes china become the world leader it's just like i like what the silk road back to thousand years ago but this project does not include the usa <laughs> One Bell, One Row, or Bell in the Road Initiative, it's a natural product of last 40 years economic development in China. 
we have history actually to refer to. When, you know, we all know the sun never sets on the British Empire. What did that mean? You know, they had that time, they had, they don't call it one by one row, but they had that kind of expansion. And you also have seen Roman. We also have seen U.S. martial uh, plan, martial aid. It's just different scale and different time. For China to have one bell, one roll at this time, it's a very logical, very natural. And I work with, there's Chinese saying, uh, so when, when the water pours in, the lake forms, right? So this is what it is. Last 40 years development, China has mastered so much expertise, so much uh, knowledge in a number of different areas. And we just, Nick just said about uh, uh, infrastructure, that's one. China has the longest uh, highway, longest, uh, you know, the railroad um, track, and et cetera, et cetera, you know. Um, so, but the market is only this, you know, there's only limit. And besides, China has a lot of many other issues had to deal with. And so, you know, to deal with excess capacity, um, to increase, you know, um, the, it's, a, it's a, a market beyond Chinese border, and to solve some labor issues. Um, you know, there are a number of many things. And one bell, one row, same is just the same. Very, I think it's very strategic. In a way, it's quite brilliant way of solving some of the issues, deal with some of the issues. And it's very natural to me. Very good. Uh, for me, the One Belt, One Road initiative, I think more spiritually about it. Um, as Nick talked about the infrastructure and Dr. Young talked uh, about you know, the more specific. I look at it uh, for the last four or five years, I've been working uh, with multiple Chinese groups in Southern California and in Hollywood to bridge the gap. So I, I think of it as the infrastructure is the bridge, the kind of, you know, in our mind, bridge between China and the US to really bring the two together. And for myself as a global ambassador to over 40 nonprofit organizations around the world, I speak and travel around the world to bring cultures together. I talk about cross-cultural communication. And just as in the last workshop that we had, one of the speakers was talking about the difference in, for example, even education of children in China versus the US, and how different that is when a Chinese student comes to the US and either falls flat on their face or doesn't know what to do because they don't have the right uh, support group, for example. So I look at One Belt, One Road as an opportunity to bridge that gap and to bring those that want to come from China to start their own companies, their businesses, and give them all the opportunities that they need. For example, the organization that Tai represents, two of his organizations, the councils, um, give many opportunities to have a variety of resources here in the U.S., for those Chinese companies and vice versa to have us, we that want to, for example, uh, my company Dome Entertainment is uh, currently co-collaborating and I'll sh maybe share more of that in another question uh, with uh, Chinese investors and how does that work and how do we bridge the cultural gaps to create a fabulous film that is a global film that will be received well globally, not just in China and the United States. When the Belt and Road Initiative comes to my mind, what impressed me as a journalist is the uh, uh, gigantic scale. So here, I want to play up with some numbers. The Belt and Road Initiative, uh, it will cover a population of 4.4 billion people. And as for the economic output, the total will be around 21 trillion US dollars. And it will involve about, so far, about 100 countries have already participated into the initiative. So it's huge. Those numbers tell us one thing for sure. It will bring a great deal of opportunities as well. Thank you. And uh, hold on the microphone. I think Helen just mentioned about Belt and Road Initiative is no longer the old Silky uh, Road because back that is a, a cultural exchange. Now the Belt Road Initiative is all about collaboration and partnership. So the next question, logically, back to June, and if you um, can uh, 
uh, answer this one because China Daily is one of the largest Chinese English newspaper in the world. Deliver the message, sharing the news. And, uh, you know, a lot of people here in the United States, they are not sure, is there something to do with me because we're so far away. But matter of fact, many, many big companies or players in this country benefiting from the Belt Road, the big boys, as a matter of fact. So, um, you know, this is not just you can relate it. Also, you're benefiting from this global reach. So would you agree with that? Totally agree. Uh, when we're talking about the Belt and Road Initiative, the first thing everyone should remember is it also bring, uh, it also promote the concept of, of being connected. So we cannot, as a country or as an individual, develop without uh, the independent, uh, without depending on the uh, uh, growth and development of the other countries and the nations. So uh, when China uh, five years ago, try to orchestrate the concept. I think the leadership back then is try to connect the whole global village as one and bring the common prosperity to all of the countries and nations along the Belt and the Road. Uh, the, it's, a, it's a long one. What's your, what's your opinion, Denise? Well, I certainly see it as a collaborative effort, similar uh, to what she said. And for me, um, in listening to some of the speeches that the President of China shared when he was visiting a few years ago and continues to travel and talk about the initiative, uh, to me it's all about trust. And as a businesswoman and a CEO of companies uh, that I run, uh, my biggest issue is working with people that I trust. And I feel like the opportunities that this initiative is bringing is bringing the best up, bringing the best to the top. Now, you talked about the lar you know, the, the rich, the big companies that are making a lot of money. And we all know there's a ton of money coming into, whether it's real estate here in Silicon Valley or in Los Angeles uh, or any other um, business, you know, the, a lot of money coming from China. We have to make sure that when the money comes in, that it comes in in a way that is enriching to the local community, whether it's coming in from China to the U.S. or the U.S. to China. And part of my passion is to make sure that I find trustworthy partnerships and people that I feel good about referring to each other to make it a win-win situation. And I do think that if we all think about the initiative as the opportunity to look for the good and not the bad, because there are some controversial aspects that we're not going to uh, talk about today, but we can really make a difference if we look always for the good. And I know when I grew up in my home, my father was an optimist, my mother was a pessimist. All the years I grew up, I never knew the difference. I just knew my mother always complained about my dad. Mom, sorry if you're watching. Um, and my dad was always positive. And then when I went out into the real world at 17 years old and went out to college, I realized that there are people just like that, and I can choose to hang out with the optimists. And so as much as I love spending time with both my parents, I enjoy my dad always at even 83 years old and with Alzheimer's having a positive, always positive attitude. And I think that if we look at this initiative in that way, from either side of the globe, we can all be much more successful. Very good point. And uh, Professor Young, from the academic point of view, I think many people here in this country, sometimes they don't have a fully understanding about Bell Road Initiative. But matter of fact, even here in Silicon Valley, many companies or organizations benefiting from this initiative for this worldwide collaboration. What's your take on it? My take, uh, take on is uh, there's good news, there's bad news. Let me start with bad news. The bad news is um, the public here generally thinks one bell, one road has nothing to do with the U.S. Because it's, U.S. is not on the road or not, either not, neither on the road nor on the belt, mm -hmm. right? The north and the maritime, the south. And so they feel like, uh, you know, well, what are we going to do? And Plus, the administration, the government, the particular new administration, is very uh, equivocal about uh, its role. It did make some gesture last year, by sending a pretty high-level representative to uh, the May uh, summit um, Xi Jinping hosted in Beijing last, last May. And, uh, however, 
as you know, that uh, it really has not done anything substantial at all with One Belt, One Road. And of course, we have seen, you know, U.S. have withdrawn from TPP. Um, now is considering it going back, right, back and forth. So this, basically, the government here does not know what to do and hasn't made, it, made up its mind. So that means it cannot provide any kind of support to, to companies to participate in Bell and Row Initiative or its, you know, all these projects. Um, that actually is pretty bad news to U.S. companies. Uh, without kind of, you know, you, you know, Marshall, Marshall Aid, you know, Marshall Plan, all those projects are related to those Marshall Aid. And so much was subsidized by the government. Many companies would never reach Europe if it was not because of government. So government doesn't have a role to play here. The good news is, um, I think the good news is actually pretty selectively. You know, for Silicon Valley, uh, for Bay Area, I think there's good news. Uh, because there are many agile, small, high-tech companies. And they can just, you know, go on the radar. All right? Form partnership, go to the one bell, one row, you know, um, countries. And uh, form partnership with local, with Chinese companies. And, uh, and also, you know, the other good news is that we're beginning to see some support, such as the one bell, one road, uh, chamber lines. Uh, you know, Zhang, uh, Mr. Zhang is uh, heading now, and among, you know, a couple others. Uh, the other one can help these American companies uh, to participate. But of course, there are some, you know, big companies already there. And, but that will depend on, what, you know, their take. If they feel that One Bell, One Road is not a threat to them, and they actively participate in partnership, partner with the local companies, with Chinese companies operating you know, in one bell, about bell road countries. I think that, you know, would be start of some, you know, more good news. So that's my take. Very good. Helen, your take on this. The One Bell, One Road uh, initiative program was really a hot topic two years ago, starting in China. And we see China has signed a lot of deal with Southeast Asia countries. <laughs> And last year, it's becoming hot in the U.S. Many Ch U.S. companies have been consulting us, saying, what can we do to get involved with the One Belt, One Road with China, open the market in Southeast Asia? China SF host a forum in China, in Beijing, last October. Our topic was the U.S. infrastructure issues and the One Belt, One Road involvement. So we talked with Chinese companies, and uh, we brought 22 U.S. companies to China. And we all sit down at one table, we discuss all the opportunities. And we agree with Professor Yang, it's like, there are opportunities. The U.S. companies are seeking for the U.S. opportunities. However, there's no such initiative in between as a bridge, helping them, tell them, oh, those are the projects, and those are the needs, and that's how you get involved. Um, so that's from this year, we see the One Belt, One Road. It's not as hard as last year here in the Silicon Valley anymore. I think that's one of the reasons. And also we know um, this year there's a lot of change in the political size. And uh, people now more fo focus on the, the trade war <laughs> rather than One Belt, One Road. So as, as a bridge between the U.S. and China for 10 years, we always plan ahead. And uh, we do have uh, one bell, one road programs within China SF. And we link the U.S. company to work with the Chinese company. We see our uh, companies, U.S. Com big companies, our partners and uh, sponsors, um, especially like architect company. They got projects in China with Chinese company to open doors in the uh, Southeast Asia and other countries. And uh, we are helping technology companies to partner with Chinese company on that market because we see the local company need to have a bigger market, not only the U.S. market. But that's another issue we'll talk about it, how this technology be, can be exported to China, what the FDI will do, what the civics will do to block that. So that will be our next topic, right? Very good. Nick, your take on this one? Is there something to do with the USA? 
as far as Bell Road Initiative. The big boys always benefit from this. Do you agree? It uh, has a very close relationship, inner connection with the U.S. company. So I think that that the One Belt One Road Initiative really um, it makes that side of the world a much smaller place, and it allows people a lot easier access to um, get into just not the China market. Now it allows them to to get into the I mean that that entire side of the world. So it really makes it a much smaller place to where people can. They don't. They don't need to um, have offices all over the world. With that infrastructure, they're able to have um, a few key offices and really be able to um, the, have the whole world as their market. So that really, that really impacts the the bigger businesses because they have the resources to do that. And so that's really what I think for the for the bigger businesses is there. It, it makes the world a lot smaller for them to where they could expand into um, a lot a, a much bigger market because the infrastructure is there. Um, hold on that microphone. And um, I'm a big believer in Chamber's Commerce Service. That's why I co-founded this Bell Road Global Chamber Alliance. My passion is to promoting uh, business here for California to export, to engage, to participate, all the opportunity generated by this uh, Bell Road initiative. I think Chamber Services is so important it is a backbone of this country, particularly for mid-sized to small businesses. And uh, so I want to start this question with Nick. And Santa Clara Chamber of Commerce is the heart of Silicon Valley. And uh, from a chamber uh, point of view, I think our primary focus is going to be small to medium businesses here. And T Silicon Valley has the reputation in the world as far as innovation technology transfer, and uh, IP uh, sharing. And I think Professor uh, Young touched a very basic question. I think Silicon Valley can be one of the biggest beneficiaries from this Bell Road Initiative. So from, uh, can you briefly touch Santa Clara Chamber of Commerce, what kind of services you can provide to your members or to your future uh, friends? From a chamber's perspective, I think the biggest thing for these small to mid-sized companies is really education um, about this initiative and ed education on um, expanding their market. Um, a lot of these small to mid-sized companies don't have the resources to really learn about about what they're or to even to know how to get into different markets. So the, from our point of view, it's really educating them on on what to do and how to expand their market. Excellent. And Helen, this is uh, for you. China SF was the leading authority a couple years ago to start this campaign and uh, to show what type of golden bridge looks like in between China and San Francisco, even expanded to California, achieved greatly and under you and Darlene's leadership. Now, from now on, and uh, you just mentioned about, uh, what's uh, a particular uh, plan or services for mid to small businesses under China SF program? Any, can you share a little bit? Thank you. Um, China SF has been partnering and working with uh, a lot of uh, um, big companies, uh, public companies in the US and in China. So, um, and also, uh, China SF is the leading office for the city of San Francisco to set up uh, friendship city relationships with Chinese cities. So we have over 10, 15 sister cities, uh, since only one Shanghai, friendship cities in China. And we work with the, the provincial level government and city level government. So they tell us what their needs are, what they are looking for. So in that case, we can help with U.S. companies. We have the first-hand resources, the needs, and we, and we also uh, working very closely with all the chambers, including San Francisco chambers, who has 160 years history. And uh, we work with a lot of organizations like us, profit or non-profit or companies. So we have our own system. Then we send out this message and we link the small or medium-sized companies with local big companies to go to China or link them with Chinese companies directly to work together, to work on no matter it's domestic issues or one by one road issues. Perfect. And uh, Professor Young, you work with the University of San Francisco. 
one of the most uh, historical rich university in the country. And you started this uh, uh, CBIS, China Business Studies Institute, uh, two years ago. So from academic point of view, and how can we continue to develop Belt Road Initiative program? How can we better serve American or California medium to small businesses? Um, yes, University of San Francisco is a 163 years old uh, institution. And the CBSI was established four years ago. And CBSI is a research center uh, focusing on um, bridging U.S.-China re business relations, U uh, China and the world, in, in, you know, as a matter of fact. Um, so our job is developing talents, uh, uh, create knowledge, and share knowledge, provide platform for business communities. Our first One Bell, One Road uh, forum um, you know, was hosted uh, in 2015. I think we are the first one in this country, first university in this country, hosted anything like that, very avant-garde. And uh, since then, we followed two more forums. And we invited uh, top people uh, from, you know, not only from this country, even from China or elsewhere, um, to speak on the forum. So we Total, we had three major forums, but we also had international conferences. Every international conference we had, we also have a panel uh, on One by One Row. And this coming May, uh, we are actually hosting, co-hosting uh, another international conference in Shanghai. And there'll be one panel will be on One Bell, One Road. And I even have invited Mr. Zhang to join us. Um, so we, we now have established a student ambassador program. We want to make sure that our students, not only from China, but also from you know, the US and the world, and, and they develop the kind of knowledge, understanding that is uh, crucial for their success in the future as future business leaders. And so we're taking them each year, we take 30 students to China to attend the conferences and to connect with the local business communities as well as with the local university students. And we're doing the same thing this year. And we also publish, you know, we just recently have one, uh, one you know, article published on One Bell, One Row. And uh, we, we also present it uh, as a faculty and we also present at our international conferences on One Bell, One Road. And we're, writing, uh, we're planning to actually host uh, another Just One Bell, One Road conference in uh, Central Asia, Armenia, this coming, day, you know, later in this year. And we believe that uh, as, a, as, a as a university, it's our mission you know, to educate the public, to transmit knowledge, um, to help the companies, to help them to understand the challenges and, uh, and opportunities. We know that there are challenges. Don't believe me, don't you know, get that wrong. There are a lot of challenges with one by one row, not just even from China side, but also from business involved. You know, the, the Bell Road countries are not all, you know, easy to do business. And there are a lot of uncertainties and, you know, it's never trouble-free region, as you understand, right? So there are a lot of risks. So we need to help companies to understand those risks as well. So don't just send them. You know, hey, you know, there's a great opportunity for you to go. But you, they also need to manage the risks and manage the operation to ensure high-level high success if they decide to go. Thank you. Very good answer. And uh, this is a perfect question for uh, Denise and June. As a matter of fact, uh, Professor Young just mentioned it's not just a rosy road ahead of us. There's a challenges, there's uh, um, difficulties uh, um, all the times occurred. And uh, you are the global media and public relations expert. So you're just mentioning about your mom always criticized certain things, being negative, and father is very positive. So from media uh, mitigation point of view, how are you gonna continue promote a positive message and sharing the fact, 
the difficulty is always there. But how are we going to mitigate and manage it? Well, I would love to just talk specifically about what I'm doing right now, which is、um, in the media, specifically film. And we all know it doesn't matter which part of the world you go to, everybody likes to go to the movies. In China, everyone loves to go to the movies, and in fact, they're building new theaters every day. They can't keep up with the number. People have to wait in line, and sometimes wait two or three days to get into a movie in China. What I'm excited about is working with currently co-production with the American Hollywood. Chinese media production company, which has already been in existence in China for 20 years, producing films in China. They brought an office six years ago to Southern California to start working in Hollywood and co-collaborating with Hollywood producers. I'm the executive producer of a film called Peace Train: A Love Story. And what a better! There's no better time than right now to be talking about peace. So through the media, through sharing the message of a story, it's not a true. Story, but everybody that reads the book wants to know if it's a true story.、Uh, talking about children and bringing the message to the younger generations, and we haven't really talked a lot about that today. But I do believe that this initiative can help by starting to change the mental thoughts of the younger generation, not only in the United States but also, of course, in China, so that we can look at not having such a gap and looking at ways that we can co-collaborate. For example, with the film that we're It was already written. We have to get approved with the Chinese investors. We have to now have the script go to. The Chinese government, and then they have to put their stamp of approval on it, and then it has to go back to the directors, the Hollywood directors, and then it has to go back to the China investors. There's a lot involved in that process, but I'm persistent and persevering in that, knowing that the end product is going to be a movie that's actually going to create a better world for all of us. And I do believe that with the same question that you asked,、uh, whether it's through the media, and we'll let our expert journalist、uh, speak next to the topic, but Whether it's film, whether it's TV, getting the message out, getting a positive message out, and most importantly, access. I just want to reiterate: access of the information is the most important. And I know, for example, when I meet people and they're like, "Oh, you have WeChat," you know, they're surprised because I have WeChat. And I know that that's an absolutely essential tool for to meet, to, to meet and work with my、uh, Asian clients. Just like WhatsApp is essential when I'm working in India or Africa. That we have to find access to the people, and we have to mirror and match and speak the language that they speak from from digital all the way through. Our, you know, journalistic efforts, and with that, I'll pass it to my colleague. Very、journalism. good point. And the essence of the message is persistency is the key. It doesn't matter what we do in our life. There's always challenge ahead of us. So I,、uh, um, I, I call your what you're saying. And as an editor in chief,、uh, as a China Dailies. You carry a, a tremendous amount of responsibility, and you work really hard keep the news update, fair and balanced. So、um, I want you to、uh, uh, take on this thing. So if we call Chamber of Commerce or、uh, Denise, people like you from media are、uh, doers. They are doing the、uh, specific things around the uh, uh, Belt and Road Initiative. I would call media like China Daily or any international media like us the messenger. We want to send the message out. We also want to help explain to the general public about what is really the Belt and Road Initiative, and help to explain to them where are the opportunities. Yes, I totally agree with some of the panelists. There are challenges around this topic, this concept, this practice, but at the same time, there are opportunities. Like I mentioned several times, here I want to give you one example again.、Uh, in terms of the in infrastructure investment along the Belt and Road countries, each year we need about、uh, 750 billion investment. So majority of the money comes from the uh, uh, government, but the rest we are hoping. I mean, the uh, uh, the rest of the funding is expected from the、uh, banking industry, from the financial institutions, from the West countries. So if we want to talking about opportunities, those are the opportunities for the U.S. banks. 
financial institutions. And also for the risk control, I think the legal services in this country can provide a lot of consultancy to their uh, countries, nations, institutions uh, along the Belt and Road. So again, as a media, international media, uh, we, we are uh, more than happy to be the messenger to send the uh, objective, authentic message out to the general public. Uh, by the way, you're doing a terrific job. You're working around the clock to deliver a fair and balanced news. And I know it's a fact because as your personal friend, I know you working really hard. Thank you for the public service. So uh, the next question, actually going to be the final question for uh, this afternoon forum. There's many things to discuss, but the next question is going to be really a hot topic. Hot topic. I'm talking about hot. So particular, Helen just mentioned about the trade war. You know, uh, for the recent news, U.S. government uh, generated the trade war or uh, crisis with the world, specifically with China, caused many uneasy feelings about. It's not just from China side. As a matter of fact, from domestic, we're talking about, you know, the innovators, silicon technology transfer, new product transfer, IP sharing, and uh, domestic farmers, uh, you know, exporters. So a lot of uneasy feeling about this because China and U.S. are two largest countries in the world and there's no uh, winning one side. So you have to be a collector each other. But the recent news this morning, CNBC uh, just reporting uh, the government gonna send a high level delegation to China this week and uh, talk about compromise to create a win-win situation. I think at the end of the day, two countries, you have to work together for the world, uh, peace and uh, continuous prosperity, and the peace tree is a perfect time for this uh, product. So the next question I wanna ask uh, Professor Young, start with you, because you are the researcher and you are the professor from University of San Francisco. So with the current you know, tension back and forth, uh, would you mind to use, you know, two or three sentences to give our audience and to let them know, give us an outlook. I think the outcome is going to be more favored than most people negative about. Would you agree with that? Wow. Big surprise, actually. Uh, it's very, uh, it, this question actually requires a lot more thought than, than I have, have time to. Uh, I must say one thing. Um, the outcome of Belt and Road Initiative, the outcome of the current trade wars or potential trade war, it all comes down to people, you. It is, if eventually, it is about people. What people, you and I, what future we want to have, what the the future world we want to have. And Helen, you know, uh, Denise just said it very well, you know, it's about trust, about the people, and the, you know, Helen's expansion into Southeast Asia, uh, South America. It is all about connectivity, connecting people to people. So I'm very, very fortunate to be in the field, in the industry, which deal with people. That's education. So we focus on people to people exchange. And we do focus on soft power. You know, it is this kind of soft power that's needed. And China needs to develop more of it. And more exchange among people. And one by one road, I think it's a good platform, great platform for people to people exchange. And we need more of such kind of exchange. So we are ready, we stand ready to help such exchange. No matter what it's called, one bell, one road, or something else, it is all about people, you and I. I totally agree with Professor Yang's comments because China has, uh, in the past 10 years of success, we have already built another two offices. One is focused on Latin, as a Latin another one is focused on Asia. So um, 
a lot of things we are working on for the One Belt, One Road or the world, uh, international trade, U.S. becomes a center. Then we have customers or companies, we bring them from Latin America. Then they base in uh, the work office, um, open office in the U.S. Then get clients here with Chinese clients and open their China market or Asian market. So it's really uh, international cooperation. It's, even if it's a uh, trade war between the U.S. and China, and eventually it's a whole world. If even the U.S. doesn't want to sell the beef to China, somebody else will do that. And uh, the, the technology is the same thing. So eventually, I, w we do I believe like um, this world will work out, and we can see the action is taking right now. Correct. Nick, your positive outlook for the future? Yeah, I, I think that the, the trade war and then also the, the one belt, one road has really created the opportunity for people to open discussions that haven't been talked about before. Um, on both sides of it, we're, we're like you said, we're, go, we're approaching each other and want to see how we can collaborate with each other. And that's something that we hadn't seen in the past. So as a, as a positive coming out of it, um, at least we're, we're going and making the effort and we're, we're trying to collaborate together. And, it, and both countries, I think, see that that if we collaborate with each other, that it'll have a lot more benefit than if we were to, um, can, if we were to get into this trade war. I think China needs to, with this investment, with one one belt, one road initiative, they're going to have to grow out of out of this, and that's the whole point of it is for them to. Uh, they're investing in it so then they get the return on it and they their economy grows and so i don't think that on their side they want to necessarily shut out a a, a large consumer like the united states and on the other side i think the united states um, needs to collaborate with china to continue our growth also and so i think this the trade war and the initiative is starting the conversations for us to really um, find out how that this can benefit both of us excellent your positive message needs my positive message, my message is always positive. Um, I tell people's stories, whether it's in a film, whether it's in a journalistic way, whether it's working with uh, my client Shine on Hollywood Magazine, which is in 144 countries and very, very big in China. Uh, it, for me, uh, I'm excited to hear because, you know, you have one side in China and then you have the U.S. going back and forth with this trade war. I think there's nothing better than having a delegation of U.S. going directly to the source in China to have a serious conversation. Uh, what I, my positive message about that is that each side needs to listen. And with listening becomes knowledge and understanding. Of course, we talked a lot today about education, infrastructure, and all of that. But the bottom line is if the two sides don't listen to each other and listen to their constituents or their um, provinces or their states or the, the people that they're representing, that's what the problem is. And as in, in far as the, the Peace Train movie, um, if you go to peacetrainmovie.com, you can learn about it. But the secret at the end of the movie, um, that's really what the Chinese investors and the Chinese government are interested, we have people fighting over our movie script, is because the message is a, called a friendship pod, where it's actually a lesson that the children teach their parents in the Palestinian Israeli families that don't even get along, and they actually make them sit there and listen for two minutes, and the person has to can say whatever they want, and no cross-talking. And then the other person gets to say what they want for two minutes with no cross-talking. And these friendship pods end up changing the world and bringing peace through the love story of the movie. So uh, my, my message is if we can just take that uh, event that's going to happen very, very soon with Americans going over to talk is that we listen. We listen and we look at what, how can we make a difference for both sides. And that doesn't just go between the U.S. and China, but between the U.S. and every country that we're currently working with, which is the global economy. Very good. June, your precise positivity. <laughs> yes. Uh, when there is a tension, especially uh, the trade war, the possible trade war between the, the world's two largest economies, we made a lot of front page stories. We sent our reporters to farms, to manufacturers, to uh, the, the vineyard in California, and talk to people, uh, listen to their uh, voices, their opinions. We, uh, fr based on many of the on-site interviews, our conclusion is majority of the general public don't want a trade war. 
I guess this message is loud and clear. So we are so happy that the US government has sent the delegation, the high profile delegation to Beijing and the talk will start Thursday and also continue in a Friday. So I'm so look forward to have again the front page story about the US trade, uh, I would call the friendly talk. As long as the conversation continues, the, the hope and the opportunity always there. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you all agree with me. I have a wonderful panel expert. Do you agree? Yeah. Let me hear your big round of applause. <laughs> Louder and make a noisy. Louder. Because it is uh, true, I got a wonderful panel um, experts, each representing uh, one of the best in their particular arena and organization. So this is the first time very unique for us to put together in United States. Obviously, California has a very unique advantage for Bell Road Initiative. And Silicon Valley, we all live or has some connection here, is dear to our heart. So the bottom line is, Professor said, it's important, doesn't matter who started the initiative. It's the two-way or multiple way for relationship, for engagement, for partnership. So it has to be win-win situation. You know, uh, regardless of your color, your religion, you, where you come from, and at the end of the day, it is a people-to-people -people business. We want people from Silicon Valley has a tremendous experience to do a business in China. Our job, Chamber Alliance, to providing you the service, assistant, and facilitate the business transaction. A lot of services, no charge. <laughs>